Introduction. Why write this book? Quote, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. End quote. Victor E. Frankel from Man's Search for Meaning. I was down and out. Again, finding myself in total darkness. No light came into my world. I was tired, always tired. Rest was a luxury that I could not find. Nothing felt good. I had walked in that darkness my entire life. I had been around other people, making them smile and feel good, working hard at making them happy. That was my role. I had played my part and I had played it well. I was good at playing my part. I wore my mask like an Oscar-winning actor. No one could tell what was going on behind my facade. Not even I dared to look at some of the things inside my mind. I felt totally broken. Damaged goods was a label I could easily put on myself. Not to those on the outside, though. To outsiders, I walked like I owned the world. I was a success. When other people described me, they said I was intelligent, strong, nice, on top of the world, and so on. Despite that, I felt as far from those words as possible. I was a nobody. I was so full of destructiveness and ugliness that no one could ever love me. I could never love me. I had planned to end my own life. I would not only help myself this way, but I would make this world a better place by committing suicide. I had become, quite literally, my own worst enemy. Then I woke up. Not from sleep, but from the vice-like grip the cult had on my life. After realizing how close I had actually come to ending my own life, I was terrified that millions of others had been going through the same darkness and for the same reasons and had not survived it. My thoughts were to reach out to them, to find a way to help them, find a way for my experiences to be shared and to be useful for others. I wanted to find a way to rescue others who were trapped in the same darkness. How could I do that? At first, I had no ideas no thoughts as to how to make it happen, and once again I felt useless, down and out. Then I understood the key to helping others. I had to heal myself first. I had to find my way out of the darkness and stay in the light, this time permanently, and then I would be ready to help others find that same light. So that's what I did. I stayed out of the darkness for a long time before starting to write this book as difficult as it was. Anyone who has ever felt or lived in that same darkness will understand that struggle. Like many of you, I still feel those thoughts try to creep back in from time to time, but I do not let them. I know what it feels like in my soul when darkness enters. So now I work to fight it off at the first sign. This doesn't mean that my life today is always happiness and without stress. And after all I've lived through, it probably never will be. I know that now. However, knowing how that darkness gets in and what to do, knowing where it comes from, helps to keep it in place. Working hard to keep it out and working to make my smiles sincere and not just part of an act to please others are a few of my weapons against that darkness. When I decided to write this book back in 2014, I was in a strange place as far as my life was concerned. I was living alone, and my youngest children were with me every other week. My life was far from the stereotypical life most people live and from what I had become accustomed to. For one thing, I was no longer with the mother of those two children after some 15 years together. And I was struggling financially, which was a new situation for me. Despite that, I never lacked for anything. My children were happy and the weeks they spent at my place were, and still are, wonderful times for the three of us. Surely I felt the pressure from a rather lousy economy just like everyone else. But thanks to my newly found sister and a few good friends, we always made ends meet. We may not have traveled first class like we once did, but we did have a roof over our heads, and we never went to bed hungry. Life was much simpler than it had ever been for me, but it was also very good. 
I was learning what it really meant to be free from the indoctrination of the religion, free from the choking grasp it had always had on my life, the hand around my throat as it were. I was actually, for the first time ever, really waking up.